We've got Crypto Burb right here, Adrian, Peter Saddington, and Crypto Wendy O. I'm sure you probably by now know, know all three of them. We grew out of cypherpunks and guys with pink hair. You're yeah, creating Nobody content. wants to see that. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to see me twerk. Um, Probably the coolest thing to do ever is to go in the dirtiest dive bar and sit next to the oldest person in the room. Do you have anyone managing your socials? No. Are you? Do you have a YouTube channel? No. Do you have a TikTok channel? No. And I tell them why. Maybe I just don't end up liking you, but you have a fucking great idea. Why, why do you keep looking at me? I thought he was looking past you at me, to be quite <laughs> frank. But either way. Okay. He was looking it doesn't matter how good your technology is, how important your project is, what really matters is the community that's behind it and supports it. A lot of people have no idea how to build that community, so I sat down with three experts, Crypto Wendio, Peter Saddington, and Crypto Burb, and talked about how they built their communities and practical steps for how you, as a new project owner or someone trying to build a community yourself, can start from the very beginning at building your own powerful crypto community. That's dope. That's dope. So I hope you guys are ready. No, we're not going to really do that. Because she says that all talk goes outside of Southern California or inferior. He's out. Yeah. Okay, that's not what we're talking about, guys. Uh, awesome that we're, we're getting quite a crowd here. Uh, the last panel was really epic. Mike McGlone and Mark Yusko, definitely two of my favorites of all time. So it was a, that was kind of a, a starstruck moment for me to get them, them both together. And this is the same because these are three of my favorite people in the crypto space. And the topic here is how to build a strong crypto community. And arguably, the three people that we have on stage here are the best in the business at doing so. So... We've got Crypto Burb right here, Adrian, Peter Saddington, and Crypto Wendy O. I'm sure you probably by now know, know all three of them. So if you've been following me for the last few months, then you definitely know that I've been trading and investing on BitGet. Now listen, it took me six months to decide that they were going to be the sponsor for the newsletter. But once I saw their partnership with Juventus, that they were the world's leading copy trading platform in crypto, and also that they're a top five exchange by volume, well, I was sold and I was convinced. And I've been using it ever since to dollar cost average and to invest in Bitcoin. You can also trade there with leverage, but of course, be careful if you're gonna do that. And I don't know if you saw the recent news, but they've also done a deal with Lionel Messi. Now, you can get up to an $8,000 bonus using my link below, and you can trade spot with absolutely no fees. You also get a 15% discount on trading leverage. Go ahead and sign up right now using the wolfofallstreets.info slash bitget. Claim that huge reward and use the world's best trading platform. First, I guess we should start with why bother to build a strong community. Wendy, I'm going to let you have it first. But why is community so important in the crypto space? Well, when you take a step back and you look at the ethos of Bitcoin and you read the white paper, I think everybody should, after you leave this talk, you should go back and you should reread the Bitcoin white paper because that's why we're here, really. Um, so one of the biggest or one of the most important things for me when it comes to community is being able to help educate other people. I grew up in LA County. Our schools are absolute trash, absolute trash. We don't talk about personal finance. We don't talk about money. We don't talk about the Federal Reserve. We don't talk about the history of things that matter. So with a really strong crypto community or with a really strong community, you're able to pass that information down to somebody else. Then they can pass that information down to somebody else. And at the end of the day, if you're able to change one person's life, in a positive manner, just by sharing information, smiling, say, saying hello, it's gonna change the trajectory of their life, then they're gonna be able to impact their families and their local communities. So that's, to me, that's just the basics of why having a strong community is important. So for you, it's primarily about education and really paying it forward, assuming that every person you educate will educate two more people who will educate two more people, and that's how we reach mainstream adoption. Peter, you gave a talk yesterday, basically about being a venture capital in the space and the importance of community through that lens, which is a, a bit different. Absolutely. I think it's important, just as uh, Wendy said here, which I thought it was a little bit of attitude. She was like, go back and read the Bitcoin white paper. Because that's why Noob. we're here. No, um, <laughs> no. Well, I think we, we need to remember that Bitcoin was a digitally native construct, right? It was born online. It was born on the internet. 
It was born with all the, the cats and the memes and the prawn. And it was socialized and grown through community. And so we're really at a unique spot in time in which the most valuable asset on the planet was born digitally native. And it was grown socially through niche communities Many of these niche communities you and I have intersected in over the last five, seven years. And these niche communities are, the, are the, really the, the wheels that have grown this technology. And it's now we're moving into a phase where technology is scaling it even more. And so I think it's so important to have crypto community because crypto community is the basis of where we came from. We didn't grow out of university. We didn't grow out of some sort of uh, think tank. We didn't grow out of BlackRock. We grew out of cypherpunks and guys with pink hair. <laughs> amazing. It's amazing how the fringe becomes mainstream and then the mainstream ends up looking like suits and ties, right? So community is at the heart of cryptocurrency. It's at the heart of Bitcoin. Burb, do you agree or have anything to add to why community is so important? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's going to be important to argue over all those points because most of the truth has been shared already. Um, I think that community is important because it is working a little bit of a like as an as a leverage to you right so imagine you have a purpose and basically because you cannot do it you know you cannot achieve a bigger success in terms of like bigger change in the world yourself because it's too complex you have to have different t types of people to uh, to back you up to surround and when you kind of like try to voice out certain concerns and you know that something is off, you know that something is wrong about the government, something is wrong basically that uh, like about this, you know, even mainstream media that is not telling you the complete truth, right? And you have not so much of a proof, but you have this, this, those reasons, those concerns that you want to voice out and make people wonder, make people figure out. Perhaps there is this networking effect in this where two plus equals five, not four, right? So this is, this is this kind of like a synergy that I guess the community really can get you. Can get you. And this puts your, your voice on the leverage. This speaks as a kind of like a you know, megaphone, right? And of course it can be used just like anything else in a word. Uh, it can be used in a good purpose and in a bad purpose. There are communities which are basically extremely negative, communities which are uh, having one and a sole purpose of harming other people, right? Some, some extremists. So this is not healthy aspect to it. However, if used well, just like, you know, it applies to money or to any other tool that you, that you want to use, uh, when you want to have the cause and, and follow through to help other people, this community building becomes your proxy and this actual megaphone to speak to larger audiences, which is, well, exactly the reason why you all guys are here today, right? So this is, this is pretty amazing. Yeah, and talking about everybody being here, I would venture that most people who are at crypto conventions, certainly in the depths of this bear market, right? We don't really have the retail FOMO gambling crowd out, but what we do have is a lot of people who are attempting to build new things in the bear market. And in crypto, if you want to build something, your product is only as good as the community and the people who are passionate about it. So I think probably a lot of people are extremely interested, since all of you have built massive communities, how to actually do that, right? That, that, is, the, that is the topic here. Where do you start? If you have a new project, but you have no Twitter following, you're just launching your Discord. How do you get people engaged? How do you get them involved? How do you get them to care? Because I would argue that some of the biggest communities are for the worst products and some of the best products have the smallest communities right now. Peter, do you have any thoughts? Well, there was a great, uh, there was a great blog entry uh, by one of the investors from A16Z. I forget her name right now, it's uh, eluding me. But what I found to be is the most powerful thing that she said is that when it comes to any type of startup, one of your biggest answers to all of your problems is creating content. Now let's unpack that for just a second. Why does creating content, why does creating content become a solution for your problems? Because you're communicating your problems to the world. And that is the value of community. By creating content and saying, hey, I'm on this journey, I'm creating X, we want to do Y, we have a purpose of Z, our vision is A, the, the people group we're trying to reach is B, the market share is C. When you communicate with specificity and when you communicate with transparency your ideas to the community, you will find what we call raving fans in there that will come alongside you and say, you know what, I don't know everything about what you're doing, but that one thing that you said, I like that shit. 
and I want to do that. And I want to help you with that. And so I absolutely believe that the answer, don't miss this, the answer to all your problems is creating content. Speak those issues to the world. Speak your problems. Speak your whatever's going on. And there is someone over time that will reach out and say, you know what? I'm kind of an expert in this thing that you keep talking about that you're really stupid about. Let me help you help yourself. And so I will never assert that I am the most brilliant man in the room or in any particular market space. But what I do have is a two million person community that I can say, you know what, guys, I'm struggling with this. And someone within generally about, depending on the trolls in the Discord chat, generally within about an hour, someone will, be say, will say one of two things. Peter, you're fucking stupid. Like, you should have solved that shit. Or the other person, another would be, Peter, that's a really interesting question. I know a guy. Now you have my attention. That makes perfect sense. And I would say that everyone on this stage is a prolific content creator, to your point. So I think that we all agree with you. Uh, Wendy, you're the most popular female YouTuber in crypto on the planet, but also we're way ahead of the curve. In fact, probably a year and a half, you told me that I need to get take on TikTok and I didn't listen because I said I was too old to take for TikTok, which I still stand by. Um, but you're yeah, creating- Nobody content. wants to see that. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to see me twerk. <laughs> um, but you're creating content across multiple platforms on a daily basis seemingly every hour of the day. Most people can't do that before they have an audience though. So you think that people should be focused on a single platform or a single creating their Discord first or, or a YouTube or a Twitter? Or do you think that it benefits someone even when they're new to spread themselves thin over all these platforms? So it kind of depends. It depends what your mission is. It depends what your goals are. It depends what you want to build. I have really bad ADHD and I get manic. So I have to do something every second of the day. If I'm not doing something, I'm like having a panic attack because I'm like, oh shit, I'm not doing anything. So for me, I generally start, you know, I start with my Coindesk podcast, with the podcast on Coindesk and then we go to the live stream on YouTube and then we start making TikTok content unless there's something like really important to get out. But TikTok is a really, really great way to communicate with your community. And I do advising behind the scenes as well, more like consulting for projects. And that's the first thing I tell them on the call to get their business. They're like, how can you help us with marketing? Like, how do we build a community? How do we do this? I go, do you have anyone managing your socials? No. Are you, do you have a YouTube channel? No. Do you have a TikTok channel? No. And I tell them why. They don't have an answer for it. But with TikTok, it's super cool because you can take that small media piece. You can put it on Facebook. You can put it on Instagram. You can put it on YouTube. You can put it on Twitter. You can put it on any platform or Discord. Yes, the syndication, tech, the syndication abilities of TikTok are actually superior. Like you should actually start with TikTok yeah. and export to IG, Facebook, Pinterest, et cetera, et cetera. Like TikTok yeah. should be the ingest mechanism and funnel for your, crypt, for, your, uh, for your content. Yeah, and the cool thing about it is too, is like if you're somebody who's actively building a project and someone's like, you know, this is, you know you're a scammer or, you know, I, or I have a question about something, you can easily address that topic in under 60 seconds with something really clear and concise and get that message out. And then you can post it on all other platforms so that people can get the same information. And then what happens is, let's say you answer something like you were talking about when you ask a question in the Discord. If it's something that's super cool or it's beneficial, then they're going to take that content piece and then they're going to share it. So it's essentially like you're doing like free marketing for yourself with a little bit of an opportunity cost because of time. But you ain't wrong, though. By creating a clip and giving it over to your community, you are giving them the ability to market for you. Mm -hmm. And so and, and I'm, I want to kind of jump on your question, though. Many platforms are single. Start with one. Start with one. And the reason is, is because you don't have the behavior patterns of discipline to continue to create content for one just yet. And so to try to go to multiple is, is biting off way more than you can choose. Chew. So choose one platform and choose what I call, like you probably say some stuff different, uh, similar to your clients and your customers, is I say, choose a cadence to creation that is sustainable. And for most of the people that I work with, it's once a week. Baby, I'll take once a week if that's where you're starting at. I don't need once a day. That's too much. Let's start with one piece of content a week on one platform, and then we can involve and grow and scale out from there. But it's so crucial, and you know this. Well, you're manic. And Very much so. 
we've done podcasts together, so I've, I know. <laughs> and you have to keep your hands moving. I, I think it's, it's great for, for, for you to be able to really lock in that energy and create a discipline of content creation because you're a machine. I'm interested to hear from you because you also are pl- pl- prolific and create across multiple platforms, but you've actually curated, I think, a really unique community with the Burb Nest, which has been one of the biggest communities and names really within the crypto space. And part of that is something you can actually monetize, right? And I think we, we can all talk about, obviously, the value of community and education, but there should also be something in it for the creator, right? Absolutely. And so you've built something that's become an incredible business, but also a beneficial community. How have you been able to, to do that? Like the Burb Nest itself, you know, it's just, it's just one piece of a puzzle to the story. Uh, it's, it's a community within a community, right? This is like a cluster of, of people who not necessarily think alike, but people who have one and the same goal, right? Which creates this some sort of, again, like a networking effect that only people who have one and the same goal in mind as and become financially free, which is not, which is not so obvious at all, you know, uh, they come to learn and improve and I'm just giving them, handing them the tools, right? It's some sort of like education and experience that I've got, but it's uh, like, it's a never learning, never ending story to this, right? You always have to keep on learning, keep on improving. I wish the markets had some sort of like a specific order, like some rules, somebody just wrote some rules, you know, and, and you buy, buy or buy every Monday and sell every Tuesday and then you're going to get fucking rich and get off the grid like after two months or something. But in Sally, it doesn't work like that, right? So you have to keep adjusting to it and it's never ending story. So we'll keep on adjusting f- like uh, till, the day you, till the day you die, basically. But um, I wanted to back off, you know, a little bit and, and then just mention you know, the, the point about, well, creating, because when you were guys, you know, discussing this, um, I remember this, this guy on Twitter, I think, uh, and in his bio, he put, um, this is going to be a paraphrase, like, I'm posting content every day until Elon Musk accepts an invite for my interview or something like this, right? And well, in all honesty, if he keeps on doing that, you know, and if he keeps on really doing what he says in his bio, I'm 100% positive. Eventually, there's going to be this day that Elon Musk is going to can, like, come in and accept his invite, right? So uh, with regards to building the community, well, there is this significant follow through factor to it, right? It's not enough to just kind of like set up a base and just talk to, 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 you know, to couple of random guys on a, on a daily basis. Uh, but in fact, this community becomes the people of, again, of the, like the, the, the group of people who have one and the same goal, right? And this goal, again, helps you really um, push for something better change. Um, monetize, yes, of course, monetize, right? But um, like there are plenty of ways to monetize that, right? I'm, I'm definitely far from being an expert in those, but you know, building the community is, is time consuming, right? Time is time is precious, time is money, basically, in economic terms. You have to figure out basically a way to pay yourself back somehow, right? And just, you know, me trying to look at a way, um, you know, at, at, at this community in a form of, of a business, well, you invest your time, you invest your resources and expect certain returns out of that, right? Because otherwise this is going to be a losing journey to you. And you don't, like, I don't know anybody who would love to lose just, you know, for the sake of it. Everybody hates losing basically. So trying to monetize this, yes. Uh, but this comes more as a opportunity that it can use, right? I know people who would refuse to monetize that, which is also good because it serves maybe them their own purpose. But overall, you know, um, monetizing, yes, not always maybe the case. Uh, in my case, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to, to, to have built what I built. But it's, again, it's a never ending story. It just keeps on getting changed every day. Hey, Peter, I want to zoom in on something you sort of hinted at before. So I was a, most people maybe don't know at this point, but I was a DJ for 20 years and I was a music producer. And there was a point where I realized I wasn't gonna become some major label artist, but I still had to make a living. And I did a ton of research on community and marketing. And I realized that if you get to the point where you have 500 to 1,000 super fans, people that will really engage with every single thing you do, come to every one of your shows, buy every product that you put out, that's enough to literally build an entire community and make a living. So to me, a lot of times we focus on quantity, how many people, our numbers, how many followers we have, when we should likely be 
focus more on the quality or the few people? Because you said before, listen, you, there might be that one person in your community who says, Peter, I've got a solution to this. That's more valuable than the 100,000 followers that are not engaging with you, 99,000 of who are bots anyway. You got so it, right. you got yeah. it. And that actually is part of the article from A16Z. They talked about raving fans. And she said that from the economic standpoint, all you need is 1,000 raving fans paying about $45 per month each to have a great living, to create even projects. And I'm gonna bite off from what you said there. My journey with community has been one of the most amazing experiences that I could ever imagine. Let me, let me take you on a, a small journey here. In 2011, I bought my first Bitcoin at $2.52. Just let that sink in. Be mad. <laughs> it's okay. Right? So I started building a community around this nascent technology, this nascent idea. And from that journey, I have had raving fans, just like we're talking about, raving fans follow me since 2009, 10, 11, all the way up to, to now. Not only have some of these community members become great friends and colleagues in arms, but I invest in them now. And so... Let me, let me talk about this, this is so cool. I run a $50 million venture fund right now deploying into Bitcoin mining and staking operations. My managing partner was a subscriber of mine on YouTube seven years ago. He just so happened to be an amazing operator, 20 years deploying capital, and he was so effective at the specialization of understanding infrastructure costs, especially around Bitcoin mining. I've made millions with this man over the last five years. He came from my community. We cut a $250,000 check this year to one of our investments. He's a five-year member of our community. We cut a $150,000 check this year to another community member who I've known for four years. He started as a Twitter follower. We just invested $250,000 check into a decentralized platform with four individuals and they have all been part of my community since 2017, 2018. What's your Twitter name again? My Twitter? Yeah. At Agile Peter. Send me Take those a picture checks. right now. Send tweet me a couple it at of me those chicks. So that we can be like Twitter Inception. He really does have very rabid fans. Every time you're on my stream, <laughs> you have these like this 20 or 30 people that show up and just, yeah. it's literally like yeah, and they're a, just a, like a golden god. Fuck this guy. Peter's better. <laughs> right? Now they're, they're rabid. They truly are rabid. But make no mistake. I have built multiple startups with my community members. I've deployed $1.7 million since February this year into my community members. And four out of our six investments this year are profitable. And so my design of a venture fund was that I would only invest in my community. And so far, my community is paying me back big time. And that's, a, that's actually a novel and largely unheard of approach to monetizing your community, but doing good for them while, while doing it. And have you found that you have a core group of extremely rabid fans that have helped drive your community as well, Wendy? Oh yeah, I've got some really, really amazing people that are subscribed to my channel and that hang out with, I, like, I don't even like to call them followers on Twitter. They're, they're people that are my friends for the most part. Um, I've actually hired, um, my entire team is from people that I've met from Twitter, from my audience that have followed me. And I trust these people. I trust these people with my private seed phrase. Like my team does amazing work. Um, I've all, like another really cool thing is, is I get a lot of like, I get a lot of projects that reach out to me that want like, hey, Wendy, do you want to be an advisor? Do you want to do this? Whatever. Um, I get to know, I do my best to know a lot of my community. And when I get these types of opportunities that I can't accept because time, obviously, my mom to a six-year-old, she runs me ragged. But I'll put a tweet out and be like, hey, so-and-so is looking for whatever, drop me a line. And I've, got, I've helped people get hired. Um, I've helped people bring in good income just from utilizing my network. So one of the cool things I get to do is I get to share my network that I've made from, you know, doing YouTube, TikTok, whatever it is, to my audience. And it's been a really, really cool experience. I get a lot of emails and people saying, thank you so much. I connected with so-and-so because of you or whatever it was. And it's really fucking awesome. Really cool. And Adrian, you have a, a huge business. I mean, it's unbelievable how many people I go and see on Twitter and they're in some way involved in the bird nest. Are those largely people that have come from your community as well? 
Yeah, I'm very, very blessed, you know, feeling very lucky for it. And uh, it's, it's, it's truly beautiful because like, like Wendy said, you know, my entire team consists, like except for my family members to it, uh, consists, you know, of, of people who really came to me, you know, from Twitter again. Right. So even if not Twitter, I mean, then through Discord or whatever other means and terms, right? But eventually it's all starting off Twitter. So this, again, this is the very, very uh, kind of like a, you know, direct result of this community building, you know, what we were discussing at the very beginning, right? And this really helps you, again, get the people uh, who, well, eventually, learn, you know, end up doing something really good with, your, with yourself. Um, like you're meeting friends again for life. You're meeting people. Uh, you're learning again on a, on, a, on some sample within your team. Uh, like about the people that come and go, there's always going to be some you know shift to it. It's never going to be like 100 percent of the of the people. Some people you know would decide to to um, to part for for different ways uh, for their own different goals. However, ideally, you know, it us all eventually getting to, to go to the point that you, you're meeting your friends every day and um, just make a good business with them. And, and I can speak anecdotally, Wendy, and you were there actually, I think it was 2019 in Vegas, you hooked me up with my first conference when I was a small Twitter account with 40 or 50,000 people. And at that time, you were doing in person, in the real world, not online, I know it's crazy, it's crazy, but you were doing meetups all over California, you were doing them in, in La that. yeah, in Las Vegas. That was your thing, remember? Yeah, I actually, I always forget about that. So when I first kind of started, I just remember um, conference tickets used to be super, super expensive. And that's fine, I get it. Like everybody has got to get a bag, everybody has to get money. But the thing was, is I was like, I, cause I was super poor. I grew up very, very, very poor. I was like, I want to learn more about this crypto Bitcoin stuff, but I don't have a thousand dollars to pay to go listen to a bunch of people talk. Like I want to meet, I want to talk to people, I want to network. So I started hosting my own events and I've done over four dozen across um, Southern California, mostly in LA cause I'm born and raised there. And then I was able to connect with a bunch of people. Um, I always get, you know, I got offers to go speak at events, stuff like this. And Scott was like, should I go to this event? And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, you should go to this event. Do you want to speak? And he's like, uh, and I was like, yeah, you should go. It's and I'm true. like, no, but in a good, cause you're like, I don't know, should I do this? Like whatever. And I was like, no, you should. And he did. And it and was look at awesome. you now. <laughs> it's all because of Wendy. <laughs> but, but that leads into my next question, which is that we talk about community, which in this context is Twitter, YouTube, Discord, Telegram. What about the real world? Is there still value to doing meetups and to yeah. building something locally and to building a community in your own city where you can take it even on the road and build that or should people really focus online? So it's good to kind of be diverse. Um, I'm lucky because I was able to do a bunch of meetups um, early on. I kind of stopped doing them for a little bit because, you know, stuff, life, panorama, things like that. But it's really important to go, like if you can, it's important to go to all these local events, especially the free ones, talk to people, network with people. We're in a bear market. There's not a whole lot going on. I guarantee most people are not taking trades right now. We talked about this yesterday. Go to these events, talk to people. It's, a, it's different when you get to connect with somebody in person because it, it's in-person interaction is something like, even though we've got the metaverse and all these cool things, it's something that I don't think will ever be replaced ever because let's face it, humans are very, they, they need interaction. They need affection. They need hugs. They need, you know, smiles, like things like that. I know it kind of sounds silly, but well, it's, it's really, true. It's not like it's, it's hundred percent true. Like people need this type of interaction. So in-person meetups are important and online is important too. But me right now, I think that it's the coolest thing that I can probably do is host some of these things in a more, you know, intimate um, way at the boxing gym that I support, which is also a community center and really kind of teach people that grew up super poor like I did and worse off than I did about money, about finance, about Bitcoin, about what money is. And you're able to do a lot of that stuff in person. So both are equally important. Um, but if you can host an in-person event or go to one in your area. I mean, everybody's here, so I think we, we get, we're inherently spe you know, preaching to the, to the converted to some degree because everybody sees the value in coming here in person and speaking. Are either of you doing in-person meetups for your community, not, not at conferences necessarily? Absolutely. Our government really fucked us in lockdown, right? They, what they did was, I believe, have, will create a lost generation. Um, and the reason is, is because we have... I have, I have an 11-year-old uh, daughter and a 9-year-old son. And 
those two years of lockdown, the, those children did not get physical touch, did not get affection, did not get socialization, did not get any of the things that are so crucial to the young minds of, you know, the six-year-old to the, the tweens. And so physical contact and physical engagement with people, even as with us as adults, is so important. So go out there, reach out there, be intentional. If you guys have been here for the last couple of days, you've seen me flying around. Like I interject myself into conversations. I want to get to know you. I want to understand you. I want to understand your story. I'm also a venture capitalist and I cut checks. So you probably want to talk to me anyway, <laughs> right? So it's important that we have that human element to what we do in community. And I think it's really important that if you do create a community, that you create provisions for that physicality because that's where real juju is made. It's really made there. It's when we get to smash atoms together and have these small conversations where ideas emerge and we start challenging each other. And maybe I just don't end up liking you, but you have a fucking great idea. Why, why do you keep looking at me? I thought he was looking past you at me, to be quite frank. But either way, he was looking at one like of us. Like you, like gotta, you, gotta Hunger Games. you gotta smash atoms because your ideas aren't ever that good and your ideas are never fully complete until you smash your atoms against someone else who can give you an alternative perspective, a different vantage point, or a different idea surrounding what you think you thought you knew before you came into that conversation. Just to quickly add on to that, probably the coolest thing to do ever is to go in the dirtiest dive bar and sit next to the oldest person in the room and talk to them. They got stories. You will learn so much, so much. But maybe not about Bitcoin. So, <laughs> so uh, Burb, you are all over the world. Every time I look up and check your social media, you're at another conference, another meetup, another thing. So obviously you see the value in the real world interaction as well. Is that something that you're doing with your community or more as a sort of business to business uh, opportunity where I think a lot of people here, this isn't about community, it's about making connections and networking. Um. Yeah, I, would, I tell you, I tell you what, I like. I come from Poland, right? Poland is like for like it's it's somewhere in between well states and, and in Asia. So there is a lot of back and forth, basically, right? Like you guys are lucky in here that everybody comes to you, right? And well, I need to travel uh, to to meet uh, you know, all the great people you know here in the US. Uh, while, you know, a lot of also is happening on, let's say, in the Dubai scene, right? Dubai is extremely hot in terms of like being the crypto hub. And there's this Portugal as well to it, uh, which is, you know, just a little bit on the line right now, uh, reportedly, in terms of like introducing new taxation laws for it. But they speak about it every six months and nothing happens, so whatever. But um, like, in all honesty, you know, I wish, I wish time was, you know, you could, you could stretch it. I wish you could stretch your time and, and, and be everywhere you can basically to travel as much and, and, and be, you know, be there with the people. I value that a lot and it really also helps you, helps you feel better, mainly because people, you know, are, are this, this crowd animals, if you will, right? So we all, we all love interactions, but interactions in terms of like mimicking our own faces, like looking, you know, this, this kind of like a mirroring effect that we look at certain people's emotion, like you just make a smile and everybody smiles back, right? This is what we love, like puts, puts the interference in us. So it makes us feel better. So that for itself, you know, when you, when you kind of like want to feel, feel better, um, like about yourself, feel better just for, for, for the mood, you kind of like go and talk to the people, right? It immediately improves your, uh, the, the, the way you feel. And on top, you can learn something new, just like you mentioned, right? So there's, there's always this more positive side to it than any sort of like negative. Of course, you, you take a risk of, of you know, getting uh, like somebody, somebody offending you or something because, I don't know, you look funny or, or I don't bolt or, you know, I have a beard or something. So I always kind of like go and expose myself to risks this way, but eventually the pay of, of meeting those people and talking is like, is definitely a positive winning bet to me, yeah. They never say anything to you in person about your head or your beard. It's only on Twitter, of course. So I'm gonna put all of you on the spot and it can be something that uh, is repetitive from earlier, but given that this is an advice panel, what's the one thing you would tell someone who's sitting here and has a new product, just literally like where to start? First thing that they should do, we'll, we'll just go down, Wendy, Peter, and then Burp. Whatever reservations you have about making content or going out and talking or networking, um, do it. You might have this feeling in the back of your mind, like, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, because I used to feel that way, and I still feel that way sometimes, because um, how I grew up. 
but just go out there and do it. If you do not take the risk now, you're never going to take it and you might not get another opportunity. If you don't put yourself out there, some, there can be something really good that will come of it. I wrote a book, my third book on this. So I would love for you to download it for free. It's called Gravity. It's called How to Create a Gravitational Brand and Grow That Thousand Raving Fans. Come to me after this talk. I'll send you the bit.ly link. I have to believe it's bit.ly slash gravity book, but it might throw you somewhere else. I don't know. But I, I made it a PDF. I'll give it to you guys. It's a, great, it's a great guide of how I've traversed community over the last decade and how I've created multiple startups leveraging community with one acquisition and two early exits. And so community, if I'm absolutely intellectually honest, the reason for my success is because I have community. They're the ones who bought my products. They're the ones who bought my services. They're the ones who gave me 9,000 Jira tickets telling me that my product sucked, right? They're the ones who told me I need to go into this market. They're the ones who told me that I need to talk to Scott, actually, right? They're the people who say, you need to meet this person. You need to go, to we, I was introduced to you through a community member, right? So it's, these, this community has been absolutely essential to my success and it is so, so, I'm so excited now. That I, can, that I have a fund where I can deploy capital directly back into them. And so absolutely, community is, is key. Um, I would just probably leave you with, uh, with trying to memorize this guy off Twitter, like I said, that he puts in his bio, like I'll, I'll keep posting, you know, content every day until Elon, back, Elon Musk comes back to me, something like that, right? So this is a lesson, this is a takeaway about the follow through, about the persistence. And if you keep on doing one and the same thing, eventually, you know, there are some stupid Twitter profiles that will keep posting one and the same text or one and the same picture every fucking day. And they have like 200,000 followers each, right? This is like, like some pictures of some actors or whatever. So by doing something consistently and really following through whatever the goal is, well, this is how the building process actually goes, right? So by keeping, keeping up with the, uh, with, with the pressure as in you, you create yourself these opportunities and when you follow through those opportunities, right? When you keep on accepting them, well, that was going to take you places. But eventually, of course, you're going to have to learn how to say no to a very big amount of, of you know, of the, of the questions that you get or, or their, you know, activities that you're going to face. But at the very start for the warm up for the, like, overall inception of, of this new, new kind of like branch, new community, new product that you're building, saying yes uh, to those opportunities, following through, uh, contributing to it actively or proactively is going to definitely take you good places. There was a guy who tweeted me probably every single day for two years who said, this is day 397 of me tweeting to get T-Pain on Scott Melker's podcast. I don't know why he wanted T-Pain on my podcast, but the, the sad end of the story is T-Pain was never on the podcast. But, but to, to that end, I know exactly who this guy is and repetitive, and we've actually spoken offline because it was so funny that he approached me. So my one piece of advice for all of you is you're sitting here, and all three of these people are sitting here, and they can't literally get out that door without getting past you. So feel free to ask them the questions that you have individually. I know that they're all kind and, and would, would definitely answer anything you have. It's going to be hard for me to even process how much information you guys just gave, but thank you. I think that that was really, really productive and helpful for anyone trying to build community. Everyone, Wendy, Peter, and Adrian, give it up. Let's do